Good evening, Crossroads family. I'm excited to be with you tonight to share the word of the Lord with you. I'm excited about what God is going to do in this time together. Thankful for each and every one of you. If you haven't heard yet, we plan to be back in our building uh, this Sunday morning, May 24th at 11 a.m. Uh, we're asking that if you plan to be in service with us, that you will let us know in advance uh, so we can have a plan for who plans to be here. Uh, we're excited to be back together again. Also, if you plan to attend, uh, we plan to meet out on the front stairs. Our pastor will be out there uh, to give us some instruction and some updates at 1045. So if you plan to be here, try to be here a little early and we'll plan to have uh, a good time in the Lord. We're looking forward to this service together to be back in our building. Amen. So before we get started, uh, we're going to pray that the Lord would have his way in this word tonight. And we're thankful for his word. We're thankful for his spirit and the truth of it. We pray that you would be able to uh, either tune in with us tonight or to be able to watch this uh, at a later time. Um, but I believe I have a word from the Lord and I'm excited to share that with you. So let's go before the throne of grace before we get started tonight. Jesus, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. We're thankful that you meet us where we are, God, at our point of need, our point of help. We're thankful that you're our hope, that you're our strength, that we can find peace in you that we can prevail through you, that you will open up every door for us, God, and every window of heaven to pour out blessings. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we're going to be turning in the scripture tonight. If you would like to go with me, our opening scripture is James chapter 1 and verse number 12. James chapter 1 and verse number 12. And the scripture said, Blessed is the one who endures. Blessed is the one who endures. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. I'm going to read it one more time. Blessed is the one who endures. Because when he has stood the test, I'm here to tell somebody tonight, when you stand the test, there's a crown of glory that's waiting for you. Amen. That they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Amen. I want to encourage somebody in the word tonight. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep on enduring. I bind discouragement in the name of Jesus Christ tonight. Let's begin to pray, saints. Come on, let's get into the Holy Ghost tonight. The Lord wants to do something in our midst. I pray against discouragement in the name of Jesus. I pray peace. I pray hope. I pray the love of the Father that would come into each and every home tonight. That as the word comes forth, that we can see that there is a promise to those that endure. There is a promise those, to those that stay until the end. There's a promise to those who don't give up hope yet. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for meeting us in this place. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for everlasting life, God. We pray that you would give us strength to endure in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We need to keep our mind... We need to keep our thoughts and our feelings in check. Now is not the time to give up hope. Now is not the time to turn back. Now is not the time to not get up. Now is not the time to turn around. It's time to keep our faith, to keep our hope, to keep our eyes fixed on the everlasting God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hope is in him. Our trust is in him. The scripture says that he that endures to the end will be saved. People and situations will let us down. Our world may be in turmoil and chaos, but we serve a God who's a mighty fortress, who's a refuge, who's a strong tower. We have hope in him. Amen. Amen. We need to bring our minds and our hearts into agreement and unity with the word and the spirit of God. What does thus saith the Lord? I'll tell you what thus saith the Lord is that we can find peace and hope and joy everlasting in him. Don't give up now. Don't turn back now. Keep your eyes focused on the prize because he that endures, there is a crown of life. Amen. Amen. 
Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse number 7, says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever a person sows, he will also reap. Because the one who sows to his flesh will reap destruction from the flesh. But the one who sows to the Spirit will reap eternal life from the Spirit. Let us not get tired of doing good, for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of faith. I'm here to encourage somebody tonight. Don't get tired in doing good because you're about to reap the promises of God. I'm here to tell somebody tonight that God has a promise that's waiting on the other side of the trial, that God has a promise that's waiting on the other side of the test that he intends to bring you out stronger out of the refiner's furnace. He intends to bring you to a greater place of revival in your home, in your family, in your marriage, to restore the brokenhearted. Don't get weary in well-doing. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. For you will reap in the proper time. I begin to imagine to myself all the stories of Scripture. What would have happened if the Israelites would have just given up hope the sixth time around the walls of Jericho? I'll tell you what would have happened. The walls of Jericho would not have fallen. What happened if Moses would have given up hope after the fifth plague in Egypt? I'll tell you what it would have happened. The children of Israel would have died in Egypt. What would have happened if David would have given up after he had tried on Saul's armor and realized... It doesn't fit. It's not going to work. What would have happened if Paul and Silas had given up in the prison instead of praising at the midnight hour? What would have happened if Daniel just gave up on his prayer life when the worship of a false god came to the test? What would have happened? We need to remember that at times our present situation is not our final destination. Let me say it again. We need to remember that at times our present situation is not our final destination. The best is yet to come. I'm here to encourage somebody in the Lord tonight, Crossroads Ministries, that your revival is just past this trial, is just past this time, this situation, this circumstance that you're going through. Amen and amen. Continuing in the scripture, Matthew chapter 24, and verse number 3, Matthew chapter 24, and verse number 3. The scripture says that while he, Jesus, was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples approached him privately and said, tell us when these things will happen, they want to know about the end times. And what is the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus replied to them, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah and they will deceive many. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed because these things must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Look to your neighbor and say, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. And all these events are the beginning of the labor pains. Then they will hand you over to be persecuted and they will kill you and you will be hated be, by all nations because of my name. And then he said, and many will fall away. It's not about how many times you fall. It's not how many times you go through something. It's not how many times you have a hardship. It's that on the other side of the test, there's victory. Don't lose Hope. 
Many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Verse 11. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. But, I'm here to tell somebody tonight, there's a but in the middle of it all. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The one who doesn't give up hope, the one who keeps holding on when the going gets tough, when the wars and the rumors of wars and the persecution against the kingdom comes and the nations are hating you because of his name, when you have been betrayed, when the hate of one another grows and the love of many grows cold and lawlessness multiplies, but he that endures to the end, he that keeps the faith, he that holds on, he that doesn't lose heart will be saved. Then Jesus said, this good news of the kingdom will be, claim, will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come, and then the end will come. I'm here to let somebody know tonight that the spirit of the discouragement that seems to be creeping at your door is from the devil himself. Get in the spirit. Begin to do what David did. Encourage yourself in the Lord and say, God, my hope is in you. God, my trust is in you. God, my faith is in you. Amen. You know, if there was one person that could have been discouraged and given up, one person that had the odds stacked against them, it was Paul. He said to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, what if someone enslaves you? What if someone exploits you? What if someone takes advantage of you? What if someone is arrogant towards you? What if someone slaps you in the face? He goes on to say that he suffered labors. He suffered beatings many times near death. He suffered imprisonment. He received 39 lashes. He was beaten with rods. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. He was left in the open sea, he said, a day and a night. He suffered dangers from rivers, from robbers, from his own people, from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea. Danger among false brothers, danger from toil, hardship, sleepless nights, hunger and thirst, without food, without clothing. But this is what he writes to the church at Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 13. But as for you, brothers and sisters, do not grow weary in doing good. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. If there was anyone that could have found himself in a place of discouragement, it was Paul. But I rebuke the spirit of discouragement. I rebuke the spirit that tries to come against and attack in the mighty name of Jesus. There is hope in him. There is hope outside of this test, outside of this trial, outside of what you're going through. We need to bring our mind and our hearts into agreement and unity with the Word and the Spirit of God. So let me encourage you again tonight, Crossroads family. This present situation is not your final destination. This present situation is not the final destination the best is yet to come. 
Paul said through it all, through every struggle, through every trial, through every heartache, through every hurt, if they enslave you, if they exploit you, if they take advantage of you, if they're arrogant towards you, if they slap you in the face, don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Take it to the Father who loves you. Take it to the one who cares about what you're going through and what you're struggling with. Don't be beat down, but find your encouragement in the Lord. I'm going to close with the same verse I started with, James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the one who endures. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those that love him. Endurance, and you will reap the crown of life. I'm so thankful for the Spirit of God in my life. I'm so thankful for his word that speaks to me through every heartache, through every test and trial through every letdown, through every point of discouragement, through every feeling of being alone, there is a God who seeks to have relationship with me, to bring hope into my life, a spirit of hope and peace. In Jesus' name. Well, thank you for tuning in tonight. Crossroads to our Wednesday night midweek Bible study. I pray that you're encouraged. I pray that you'll take these scriptures, that you'll begin to meditate on them, that you'll begin to read through them, that you'll find a place to be able to find encouragement. Brothers and sisters, we're praying for you, praying for one another. Amen. That's what's getting people through, is that they have a church family, that they have believers who are praying for them, who are calling them, who are encouraging them. And we're thankful for each and every one of you. Let's close in prayer tonight. Jesus, we're thankful. We're thankful for your mercy and truth. We're thankful for your spirit that guides and directs us, that we can have hope in you, that you're a keeper, that you're a protector. We're looking forward to the other side, God, of what you have for us. That even at times where it feels like the odds are stacked up against us, You're still a God of hope. You're still a God of peace. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you're encouraged tonight, Crossroads family. Also, just be reminded this Sunday morning, this Sunday morning, May 24th, 11 a.m., we're back. In Jesus' name.